Good morning and welcome to the Expert Connect Wellness Chats. I'm Anshu Narayan, founder of the Expert Connect, and joining me today is Dr. Amber Nott. Amber is a naturopath who helps people with mindset shifts to support healthy lifestyle habits. Dr. Amber, welcome. How are you doing this morning? Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Super excited to have you here with us. Um, obviously, Amber is one of our experts on the Expert Connect. So Amber, we have lots of questions for you, but we'll begin with um, what is mindset uh, shift and why is why is our mindset shift so important in staying healthy and keeping all these healthy habits? Yeah, so mindset is something that I like to look at as a learned habit or a learned pattern that you can grow and change throughout your life. And mindset is basically your perception. So how you view yourself, how you view others, how you view the world, your experiences, even things like your thoughts and your emotions, internal things as well. And it helps you to approach things in life, approach people, changes, um, your health in general. So mindset is something that I like to think about as an integral part to health. And so I like to term this um, area of health mindset medicine. And that's something that just like any other form of medicine, you can learn how to grow, how to bring more of into your life so that you can enhance health habits. And so I like to look at, let's use like a simple example of a mindset shift or some kind of way you could use mindset medicine in your life. So let's say you want to integrate a healthy lifestyle habit. So something like, let's say you want to start running on a regular basis and you're struggling to commit to actually, you know, get out and do it to actually put on those shoes and, and start going. And so if you hear inside your head, you're telling yourself, you know, I've never had an exercise routine before. I've never had this healthy lifestyle before. I don't know if I can do this. What if it doesn't even make me feel different? So these kinds of things are limiting mindset patterns that are kind of, they get in your way. They basically block you from moving towards where you want to go. And if you're able to overcome these kinds of things and shift from, you know, I don't think I can do it to something more like, I can do this. Like I have to, if I put in the right effort, I can do anything that I feel would benefit me in my life and anything that I want to incorporate into my life. So that's how I see mindset and the importance of mindset in the realm of health and, and just general lifestyle habits. And in general, it's not even just health. This encompasses all different areas of your life too. So mm. yeah, so that's kind of how I see mindset. <laughs> Yeah, that's very interesting. And you're right, because sometimes we think that we want to achieve a certain goal, but we but we don't think positively about it. We're, we're still in that sort of that negative mindset, but yeah. we want to achieve something. Um, the other thing that, that I wanted to ask you is, what is lifestyle medicine and why is it important? Right. So lifestyle medicine to me and to many others is kind of the foundation of your health. So to put it in concrete terms, it's more like, um, usually I like to call it the pillars of health. So there's, I like to think of four of them, main ones at least. So that's things like nutrition, movement, mindfulness, um, what else, sleep and rest and fun, those kinds of things. I like to incorporate all of those things and, and lifestyle medicine is kind of helping you find that balance so that you can live your health goals to meet healthy areas and, and you know thrive in your life and not just get by. Because a lot of times this balance between life and health kind of gets lost. And I like to think of lifestyle medicine as being where you, you meet all of these things together. And although those are the areas of health, those four that I listed, there's also so many other aspects of life that play into your health, like your, um, your emotions and mental state, your connection to people, your connection to spirit or religion or you know, the universe, whatever you want to think of. All of these things, nature, friends, family, everything plays a role, not only in your life and who you are, but also in your health and, and they all affect one another and interact. And so I like to think of lifestyle medicine as being 
all encompassing. So what areas are maybe lacking or, or being a little bit more left behind in your life? And how can you bring those up? Or what areas like work or something is, you know, a huge priority that maybe you need to find more balance with other areas as well. So that's kind of, yeah, so that's how I like to look at lifestyle medicine and integrating your life with your health. Mm, interesting. And I think when you talk about integrating your life with your health, uh, another question that comes to mind is burnout. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> because I feel like that's an overused word, <laughs> but yeah. we don't necessarily understand about burnout as much. So I would like to ask your expert opinion on what is burnout and why do people suffer it? And can we incorporate lifestyle medicine in helping us uh, reduce our burnout? Yes. Yeah, you're totally on the right track. And you're so right. Burnout is what's the word, like a trigger word or a, I don't know, a popular term that seems right now. It's right. not really, yeah, it's not really a medical diagnosis word that we use so much in, in the medical industry, but we would say things more like adrenal fatigue or adrenal insufficiency or, or yeah, or mm -hmm. adrenal exhaustion. So there's mm -hmm. different terms for these things and there's different phases um, of what all of it encompasses. But for the most part, burnout is a newer, more modern diagnosis. It's something that didn't really exist way in the past. It's something that we've kind of, as humans, our lifestyles have influenced this to become a problem for a lot of people. And it's basically when you're you're overworking and you're overstressed and it builds up. So these chronic stressors or influences in your life have effects on you both emotionally, physically, and um, on a psychological level. And so you begin to, your health kind of takes a hit when that happens. And to put it into more symptomatic terms, so how it's characterized in people is mainly exhaustion. So you feel, mm -hmm. you know, that overwork and everything really takes a toll on your body. It can cause a lot of um, research likes to, to use the words like cynicism and low mood. So not really fully enjoying things that maybe you used to enjoy or activities that you take part in. Um, you lack motivation, you feel a lot of procrastination, interest goes away, you start to withdraw from certain areas of your life that you used to, you know, really be a part of. And um, yeah, so those are those are the main characteristics. But in, in a physical sense as well, you experience things like fatigue and weight changes and appetite changes and sleep changes. And yeah, there's so many other areas that it influences that we don't always think about when, you know, we're, we're overworking and we're not really balancing that life that we were talking about, life and, and health, when we aren't really balancing them as best as we could. So yeah, so I guess those are kind of the symptoms you'd be looking at. But on a physiological level, I mentioned adrenal fatigue and adrenal exhaustion. And that's because the adrenal gland plays a really large role in the physiology that takes place in, in this condition. And when you start going down that road of burnout, it's due to something we would call chronic stress. So that might be, you know, the first phase that you would find yourself in when you're in this place. And your adrenal gland is just pumping out hormones that make you, you know, feel like you can take on all of that stress and all of that overwhelm. So um, things like adrenaline and cortisol are spiked. Those are, you know, there's a lot more going on there, but those are the typical words that people tend to know. So we'll stick with those two hormones for now. And those things are being over pumped, your adrenal glands, just pumping them out. And in the past, this would have been a really great reaction because if we saw a tiger or something, you know, we'd need that change a physiological change to escape that situation but nowadays our stress isn't you know a tiger it's something like I mean sometimes I might be on a hike later today and see a bear who knows and I want that reaction but for the most part people in their life are the stress would be you know work wants you to finish x y and z before you go home but you have to get dinner on the table and take your kid to soccer and blah 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 like you have you feel stressed because you're overwhelmed by all that life is now and to handle that, you don't necessarily need these physiological changes of blood being shunted to muscles and, you know, your brain losing, losing that supply. And yeah, so a lot of things, we don't really need that same reaction anymore. And there's ways to create a space for yourself where you can handle things without reacting in the same way to these stressors. So you can learn 
how to make your body react in a more favorable way. And that's something that's part of the treatment of something like burnout or adrenal fatigue. Mm, interesting. I was, you explained that really well because I was listening to this book from Dr. Ranagan Chatterjee and he says that our body doesn't know if we're if we've seen a tiger and we need to run or or it's just a stress because of a deadline from from a from something that's due at work a stress is a stress is a stress our body is not able to distinguish the two and, and obviously that's why we get into burnout so much faster today exactly. but, yeah yeah and, and i just thought that was so interesting right but then but then when you sit back and think about it you're like that's so true. How is the body going to know? Am I in danger? So should I really now get ready to run and escape and do all of that? Or I, I'm just stressed out because I have 20 things that I need to do and uh, I, I just can't manage all of it. But yeah. the, the question that I'd like to ask you is how can mindset medicine uh, play a role in helping people with the longevity, longevity of their health? Um, and, and sort of trying to get take control of burnout and all these other things that we face today. Yeah, so I find that mindset and lifestyle medicine go hand in hand because, mm -hmm. and that would be the root, right? I guess I didn't really mention that. I should say that first, that when you're experiencing things like burnout, lifestyle changes are going to be what you need to find that balance, right? There are, of course, you know, nutraceuticals and, and, uh, botanical medicine, acupuncture, you know, there's different treatments to help you get there. But overall, to prevent this from happening again, and to get to that root of why you're experiencing burnout and these problems is a lack of balance. So lifestyle medicine helps you balance that out. But to get there, I find that mindset medicine is this huge component that we're kind of missing because well, I, I feel like it's starting to come about a lot more now. It's, it's you know, mindset's being talked about a lot, which is so fantastic because it can help you make those changes because even when people know that they need to make lifestyle changes to, or that it would be helpful for them, it's recommended to make these changes in how they live so that their health can improve and so that their quality of life improves, it's still really hard, even though they know that this is something they, they want and that they need. And so mindset medicine comes into play to help you make those changes, to, to get those habits on board, to find a way to incorporate things that you want into your life. So mindset is really, you know, like we talked about the mindset shift, but there's also like, how do you talk to yourself in your head? How do you listen? How do you manage stress with mindfulness? Like, how do you perceive stress? You can change all of these things. You can change how you talk and listen to yourself. You, you can have more choices, basically. You can have more control over your reaction to things. And that is a huge component of not only stress on its own, but that's also a huge component of helping with this lifestyle changes that can help you with stress as well. So all of it kind of is tied together and making these changes is tied together by mindset and how you approach changes. So that's how, yeah, that's how I find they all fit together and how they, they work together as a team. Yeah, I, I was going to also ask you that. Uh, what are some signs that people uh, can see that they are creating a health-oriented mindset? And I think you answered that, that how we talk to ourselves could be one way of seeing that, okay, now we're changing our mindset. Yeah, definitely. There's so many, yeah, how you respond, how you react, how you, even just looking at something, like before I could have looked at this water bottle and thought, you know what, I don't really like this color. And, but I could be like, well, you know what, this is a perfectly good water bottle. It keeps my water at the perfect temperature. So you can you can look past certain things. Yeah, you can learn to train your mind to see anything new and differently, including yourself and changes that you want to make and other people and life and the world. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, that's wonderful. So, what are what are what is your morning routine look like? I mean, we talk you you talk so much so much about mindset, and I know you have this um, a, um, sort of a program that you run on Instagram too, all about mindset. So, what does your morning routine look like, and what are some self care tips that you can share with us today? Yeah. So my morning routine, I feel like a lot of people are shocked to hear that it, it changes a lot. I know that I love, I love change. I'm a big change person. I like doing new things all the time. So my routine tends to change as well. So I guess I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. And I can give some tips about things that have really helped me in the past. So right now, I just recently got back from a vacation. So 
and for some reason movement has been harder for me than normal to get back into so that has been my number one priority right now and that's what i'm doing very first thing when i wake up i hit my mat and do some yoga um that i like mindful movement i like incorporating that and everyone has different you know forms of movement that they enjoy so i don't know you could pick whatever is best for you but i i personally love yoga i love the mindset aspect of it as well and then I like to have a coffee or a tea and I read um, a spiritual text typically or a self growth text or something like that. And I take notes and I journal about what I read and I find ways to, you know, apply what I've learned to my personal life and not even just past experiences, but also how I can take it and move forward with it and integrate it into my life that day. So I like to do that. And that also tends to lead me into more journaling, which is kind of in my, um, like my planner, I'll get that out. And if the night before I didn't write down my top three tasks for the day, I'll do that really quick. And there's a spot in my planner for gratitude and affirmation. So that's amazing. I always write down my gratitude. Sometimes my affirmations bleed throughout my day, but always gratitude, love doing that. A lot of people like having a habit like uh, every time they brush their teeth or whenever they, as soon as they wake up in bed and right before they go to bed, they'll state their affirmation statements. So there's so many ways or their gratitude statements. And yeah, so there's so many ways to integrate them into your life. I like writing it down in a book so that I can look back on it and be like, oh, right. I remember when I was super grateful for that. I should, you know, remember that again. So yeah, so however you like to do it. Um, one practice that I, I actually typically love that I haven't really been using as much recently is visualization, where you you sit and you, uh, so maybe today I could have visualized prior to speaking with you, I could have visualized what I wanted the experience to be like, or before seeing patients, I'll visualize, you know, how I want the experience to go so that I walk into it with really clear in my mind what I want to accomplish so that I don't leave that experience without feeling like there was purpose to it. Um, yeah, so I guess, yeah, I guess that's how all of that blends together. And of course, I, yeah, I love my, oh, I think I left out meditation, didn't I? My meditation comes after my spiritual reading. So I tend to, when I meditate, I like to have a purpose to it. I don't, I, I really would struggle to meditate if I was just, you know, just doing it. And I find a lot of people tend to try to do that. They try to start a meditation practice with just, you know, focusing on the breath, which is great, but I like to remember exactly why I'm doing it every single day. So maybe I want more focus that day. Maybe I want to focus on a deeper connection to myself, to spirit, to whatever, whatever my focus is for my meditation. I like to write that down and, and think about it as I, as I sit down and meditate. So, so yeah, those are, that's my main routine right now, but yeah, it's changed a lot over the years. I didn't always work out in the morning, but usually I, I would do it at my lunch break, but um, recently I've been skipping it. So it's been put very top priority and I find, yeah, I find a lot of people enjoy doing that where they'll make their top priorities, you know, very first thing in the morning so that they make sure they do it. Yes, 100%. I, I think it's very important to make that uh, priority for, for ourselves because we are important. We, we need to take care of us before we start taking care of others. So so thank you for sharing that. And how might our viewers be able to find you should they, should they like to seek your services? Yeah, so you can find me on, I mostly for social media, use Instagram and Facebook. So my Instagram is at Dr. Amber Knott, that's it. And on Facebook, it's at uh, Dr. Amber Knott ND. Um, yes, but if you want just links to those, my website is ambernot.com. And that's where if you're interested in making mindset shifts and learning more about how mindset can help you create a good foundation for lifestyle choices and lifestyle habits. Um, I run a course that helps people who struggle to make these changes, learn about mindset, get their mindset into a good place to really start making those lifestyle changes. And we go step by step through each of those four pillars and getting you really clear on what it is that you want for your life and for your health. And then we, we go through it together and it's, yeah, so it's great. It's a six week program. There's a community there too. That's all on my website. You can also go to mindsetmedicine.ca to access that either one, ambernot.com or mindsetmedicine.ca if you want to join us. So yeah, I think those are my main areas where I'm, I'm hanging out online right now. 
<laughs> Perfect. That is wonderful. Well, Amber, it was such a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much for sharing such great insights and, and truly helping us uh, think more about mindset and how it impacts our health. Um, and thank you, everybody, for watching us and stay tuned for more episodes. Thank you. Thank you.